But then you turned up. My margins vanished. Every move I'd made by rote, I had to bring myself to fully. I dream of you. I keep more of you inside my mind, my physical, personal, squishy mind, than I keep of any other world or time. If we are to be at war, we might as well entertain each other. My most insidious blue. Dear red in tooth in claw. My dear mood indigo. My perfect red. My careful cardinal. Dear red sky at morning. Just kidding. I'll be long gone by the time the wind turns right. Made you look though, didn't I? Dear Red, my dearest Blue. Hi everyone, welcome or oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kushi and today we are going to start our video by reading something from the acknowledgement section of the book we will talk about. Finally, dear reader, we dedicated this one to you and we meant it. Books are letters and bottles cast into the waves of time from one person trying to save the world to another. Keep reading. Keep writing. Keep fighting. We're all still here. And that, my lovelies, was from the acknowledgement section of this wonderful book. This is How You Lose the Time War, co-authored by Amal El Mohtar and Max Gladstone. This book is a 2019 epistolary novel by two authors. It won the Best Shot of Fiction Award, the Nebula Award for Best Novella of 2019, and the 2020 Hugo Award for Best Novella. So in this story, we have two female protagonists, Red and Blue, who are two rival agents determined on winning and securing the best future possible for their own warring factions. One day, when Red's on the battlefield, she finds a letter that instructs burn before reading. And that marks the beginning of a very unlikely and dangerous correspondence. It started off as taunts and boasts and rubbing it into each other's faces and trying to one-up each other and basically just enemies. And slowly it evolves into something a lot more. Something so epic and romantic. This book had me falling through space, through time, through anything and everything endless. But it had me holding on to love, to betrayal, and to yearning throughout the whole book. The writing style is honestly so uniquely creative and abstract and beautiful, and I don't think I've read anything like it. The whole cat and mouse game between the two agents was a lot of fun to read and was very thrilling, but also the letters. That was everything for me. It was honestly just so beautiful. Like, even from the very first letter, there was always curiosity, yes. But the way red and blue grow to become so warm and intimate and real just really hits you. As soon as I finished the book, I basically knew that I had to talk to you guys about it and tell you my feelings and just let you know that there is a book like this out there if you don't know about it and if you're interested you definitely should pick it up when i went into it i didn't really expect much i mean i'd heard about it and i'd heard some good things but i wasn't sure it was the kind of book that i would be interested in or would be able to invest in but <laughs> I was so wrong. I raced through it. I was highlighting and underlining and writing quotes down, especially from the letters. It was just so good. I could not put the book down. Like, I was constantly hungering for more, which is actually quite funny because Red and Blue do talk about the concept of hunger a lot in their letters. And I just think it was just so spot on for me to be feeling that way when I was reading this story. I just think the authors did such a good job. 
I cannot believe, I cannot believe, like, why are more people not talking about this book? I've only heard a few people and a few booktubers talking about it. Maybe I'm just living under a rock, but you know, just, just, <laughs> it was so good. It has it all. The thrill, the time travel, a gorgeous sapphic romance, beautiful lyrical writing, and overall, a connection that surpasses the mightiest of things. It all just felt so inevitable and I absolutely loved finishing the book with that kind of feeling because I've never experienced that before. Now I will say I gave the book 4 or 4.5 stars. I'm still trying to decide. I'm just letting it settle and then make my decision later. The reason I couldn't give it a complete 5 was because there are certain parts in the book where you can get really confused. It's a science fiction story, especially one that talks about time and people being able to jump into different strands of time and manipulate time and history and the future and like time traveling but very like low-key in the sense if you've watched the marvel show so it can get confusing and it's such an intricate world and it has so many systems in place and since the book doesn't really focus on all of that because it's not a typical plot it's hard to follow <laughs> We jump locations a lot. We jump from one time period to another time period a lot. The only real stability through the whole book that we get is red and blue and their connection and the letters. That's it. At a certain point, the science fiction got so confusing and crazy to me that I literally stopped trying to understand it. And I kind of think that is the point. I was just focusing on the characters by that point, which is what I think is supposed to happen anyway. So if you're a person who doesn't like books that do things like that, then you have been warned. You're welcome. You might not enjoy it that much. Or maybe you might be pleasantly surprised, but it might not fall into your usual type of reading. And there's also the fact that if you don't enjoy the kind of science fiction that this book has, then you're probably gonna struggle a little bit as well. But like I said, the science fiction part really isn't the main focus in this story. It's the letters and the beautiful writing and the connection. It just warms your heart. It just feels so damn right. Just listen to this, yeah? I want to be a body for you. I want to chase you, find you. I want to be eluded and teased and adored. I want to be defeated and victorious. I want you to cut me, sharpen me. I want to drink tea beside you in 10 years or a thousand. I love you and I love you. And I want to find out what that means together. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say to you guys. My whole point of this video was to come on here and tell you about the existence of this book and kind of sales pitch it to you just a little bit, try and sell it to you, try and show you that this is a book I did not expect to like and now is a book that lives rent free in my brain because of how much I love it. It just goes to show how books can really surprise you and just how much beauty is out there and how many crazy ideas people have and you can just fall into them and love them for what they are. Red rarely sleeps, but when she does, she lies still, eyes closed in the dark and lets herself see lapis, taste iris petals and ice, hear a blue jay's shriek. She collects blues and keeps them. When she's sure no one is watching, she rereads the letters she's carved into herself. All I'm trying to say right now is if you have the slightest feeling that you might be interested in this book or you might like it, it is definitely, definitely worth the try. It has literally just shocked me out of a reading slump that I was falling into and I am so damn grateful and glad.
I have told you everything I wanted to tell you. Now it's in your hands. I hope you pick it up. If you do, let me know what you think, even if you don't like it. I would still love to know. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my attempt at sounding <laughs> put together after reading something like this. I am very grateful that you clicked on this video on this channel. I would say give this video a like, comment down below, join the family if you like content like this. That's pretty much it really. I'm gonna let you go so you can have a wonderful day, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I will see you very, very soon in the next one.